And the temptation was just too much for this year's Q School grads and best mates, Guy Woodman and Steve Luton. But you need to be the early bird to catch the worm. Something Guy needs to work on, especially after that late tee off that cost him the Asian tour card at Q School last year. Oh, God. Woody, you let me down again, dude. Dude, it's 9.30. Oh, you're kidding me. Not again. The alarm goes off, and I think, oh, I've got to do this, 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 and this before I even get to the golf course. And I'll lie in, and I'll get up half an hour late, and then I'm half an hour behind time. And then I feel guilty if I don't tick all the boxes before I play. And before I know it, I'm running half an hour late. Let's give him a two hour, two hour head start. If you wanted to tee off at 11, let's get there for nine. Yeah, I missed 2010 11 Q School. I came out here for the first time, found myself in a decent position going into the third round. The official came up and said, you were five, uh, three or four minutes late or something, so it's a two-shot penalty. And then uh, in the last round, I finished bogey, 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 and, and, and missed by one shot in the end. So a lesson, harsh lesson learned, uh, something that I would never thought I would have done, and I did, so hopefully I'll never do it again. Down to the serious business now. I'm going to give Steve the ride of his life, and uh, it's going to be great. I don't know how this jacket goes on, mate. <laughs> are, we, are we ready? Now that these two friends have earned their card, our boys are obviously finding ways to make the best of their experience on the Asian tour. Oh, been awesome so far. I got in uh, yesterday, uh, went and had a quick look around the golf course. Awesome views, you just can't get over how breathtaking they are, really. Um, everyone speaks pretty good English as well, which is, you know, helpful. Just take a look around. It's, uh, I'm in a hammock on a beach in Koh Samui, and I look look in front of me. You got the sea, the ocean, and uh, the mountains in the back the background. Uh, palm trees, just a wonderful spot. Not the best driving skills I've ever seen, but I've seen him behind the wheel of a car, and that's about the same. Dangerous. While these two English lads like to live on adrenaline, sometimes they do have more ordinary adventures. And it's not plain sailing by any means. We turned on the shower and brown water came out. He was a little bit worried about the shower, so as a joke, I'm a little bit of a joker, I said, why don't you just tape up your mouth so the water can't get in? He said, look, you can't take any risks here. He'd, he'd been out here before. He said, you've got to tape, tape your mouth up when you have a shower. So he was like, yeah, all right. So I took a photo and put it straight on Twitter. Of course, like a donut, like I am, I, I fell for it. <laughs> but when it comes to the golf, not everyone on tour is as mischievous and playful as Luton. Genuine help is always around the corner, should these Asian tour rookies ever need it. It's one of the, the nicest tours ever played. Every country we've been to so far, everyone's been so friendly, welcoming. Camaraderie on, actually on the tour is really good, and everyone goes out for meals together, and this. It's not very clicky, everyone seems to get on really well. Ask those guys how to play certain shots and you know, try and give you advice and stuff like that and everyone's very welcoming, so great, great tour. In coming to Asia, our sun-loving beach boys face different sets of challenges altogether. But nothing they can't overcome as they take the trials and tribulations head on. I mean, the first thing that hits you is obviously the heat out here. It's very hot, um, something we're not used to back home. We probably get one week a year where it's uh, somewhere near the temperatures out here. So getting used to that is, is tough. The temperature can be, get a little warm for my liking. Um, I played in Malaysia. I was lucky enough to get into the Malaysian event about a month ago, and I couldn't believe how hot it was. Apart from the weather and cultural changes, they have to adapt to the different conditions on the golf course as well. So far, Guy has managed to make four cuts out of seven tournaments he's been in. Steve, on the other hand, has made through five four-round weekends in eight tournaments. While missing the cut would be a disappointing result, the remedy could very well be just off the course, as the various tour destinations give them instant access to the wonders of the region. <laughs> My favourite event and favourite city is probably being in Cambodia, Siem Reap. I went and had a good look around the Angkor Wat temple, and I'd, it was, you know, the culture was just Unbelievable, I loved it. I just thought it was a great place. Thailand takes some beating, really, really does take some beating. Just um, breathtaking views, people are so friendly, easy going. You can, you know, pretty much live the way you want to live. I guess I couldn't get over how good the temple was and obviously how long ago it had been built. 
and the infrastructure really of that you know of that building and how they managed to create that long ago just kind of baffles me I guess and with the time spent together so far this season despite the pranks pulled on each other we reckon these two boys have bonded enough to be best mates on tour uh, obviously from a best mate on tour is uh, Woody Guy Woodman uh, definitely not Steve Luton he's a terrible guy <laughs> I hate him <laughs> no, I'd have to say, Steve, I mean, it was quite fitting, really, in a way. I think it was only two English guys maybe got their card at Q School, and it was me and Steve, and we ended up playing the final round of Q School together. While the two best friends unwind at one of the exotic beaches ahead of the Queen's Cup, we wish them all the luck for the rest of the season.